Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show. Okay, uh, we're going to get uh, our next guest on here, but first off, I just want to point out a few articles that broke today. Uh, the TSA and Homeland Security are openly announcing and putting bids out for these little command and control booths that are going to be set up on the highways, riot control uh, simulations that they're uh, preparing for. Uh, the uh, list just goes on and on. And why are they gearing up for riot control situations? Why are they uh, funding these mobile kits to get ready for this? Because they're collapsing society by design under an Agenda 21 program. They've done this in the third world over and over again. And that's what's so frustrating. And separately from that, we have an article that links through to Radar Online uh, that got the documents that I was just talking about with the last guest where they've got 8 million Americans on a list where if the government wants to, they're saying they will scoop you up off the street under Main Corps. And this is what federal marshals blew the whistle on about five years ago to the Denver Post, was that if a child takes his photo at the airport with their 35 millimeter disposable camera, they're put on a terrorist list. Uh, if you order a vegetarian meal in an airplane, that puts you on it. If you take a photo of uh, a bridge for a class in architecture, you're put on the list. Eight million people are now on it, two million on the no-fly list. You don't know why you get on, you can't get off. That's the essence of tyranny. Meanwhile, our government is funding al-Qaeda in Libya and Syria on record, a billion dollars to them in just the last year in Syria alone. Our government gives $85 billion a month of our money to foreign banks and won't give Congress the details. And see, they think they're going to announce all this and announce they're spying on us, and it's going to scare us, just like they've been persecuting whistleblowers for four years, and now more are coming out. They don't get it. The American people I know are not scared. They have been decadent, they have been lazy, they've been having a good time. I don't blame them. And being pushed around is going to backfire on these globalists. Because the globalists are the most cowardly people. To go check the mailbox, they got five bodyguards. Okay? And they think we're like them. And it's absolutely backfiring on them what's happening. Now, our next guest will just go as James Knox. James is his first name. We won't say his last name. And he sent us his documentation and all the rest of it and uh, photos and info. And when I saw the interview he did last week with Rob Dew when I was in London covering Bilderberg, I had interviewed, as you know, telecommunications whistleblowers in Austin back in the mid-90s. And back then it was so bombshell, people couldn't believe it, that Time Warner cable boxes had microphones and listened to you two ways and were wired into NSA hubs and that AT&T had whole rooms that everything wired through and all this. Now that's all public because of a series of whistleblowers. So that's why when I saw the interview while I was over in London, one night I was you know, staying up watching PrisonPlanet.tv, I saw James Knox, last name withheld to uh, you know, protect him somewhat, and it just all clicked, but he's got more of the modern data since I last talked to whistleblowers more than a decade ago, specifically on these systems, and we're showing some of the photos he sent us. And he didn't just work in mainline telecommunications as an engineer. Uh, he worked in critical infrastructure, and that's a, that's a key word. So he, he talked to us a day before Snowden broke. Okay, so we're going to get his take on that. But what's happening is there's more and more people going public about what they know and what happens. Uh, my first wake-up call was in 1996 when they put in the EAS alert systems and I talked to uh, the engineer over five local radio stations that happened to run the engineering for our station. He said, listen, you see this system? This isn't wired in here so we can flip to an emergency call. It's out at the tower and it's here. And he went on to say, we're putting these in at the cable system to take over, but there's a whole other room locally so that they can monitor everything. So I talked about that on air, not saying the engineer had given it to me. And he said, you can talk about it, just don't say I gave it to you. And then that's when other engineers came to me. And I mean, back then, this was like being a Martian with five heads. 
So, so my point is, inadvertently, I have become an expert on this because I've worked in media and have been living right next to the stuff. And then I was invited into Time Warner. I was invited into the University of Texas. I was invited into all this stuff. Over the years, once I talked to one, I talked to two, I talked to three, I didn't burn those people. And so more talk to me. Now, now this guy, he's going to point out he's not even really a whistleblower. He's an insider speaking out, but uh, he's telling you what is all above board and he can tell you, but it's still extremely revealing. So, uh, James, thank you so much for talking to us, buddy. You've got the floor because if you don't, I'll start interrupting. Uh, <laughs> tell folks about what you did, what you saw, and how it ties into what's currently happening. Okay, Alex. I, I tell you what, first off, no fear, no quarter, and people need to think that way because they can't take away what they didn't give you. So I just want to say that. So as far as what I did, and to kind of maybe, uh, I don't know, by way of what I've done, I've known of you since the very beginning of your career, and, you know, I've kind of followed you off and on throughout the years. And then around about uh, Thanksgiving, because I haven't had uh, TV. I mean, I have this, I have a 60 inch uh, beautiful flat screen, but we don't have any satellite or any uh, cable or any of that stuff. You know, I go out and I seek my media as I wish. Uh, my TV's connected, all that. And, you know, I'm obviously aware of the risks and I can discuss that as well. But I started watching, I found InfoWars and just really dove in and plugged myself back into the, the media pipe. And I started listening to you. And the one thing I'll say that I find uh, with listening to Alex Jones and InfoWars and anything associated with you, uh, there's not much sugarcoating. I can't prove you wrong uh, as far as what is cited and links, because I've tried just by my nature. Uh, this particular aspect, what I'm talking about, <clears throat> is my bread and butter. It's what I've loved. And I stayed in this business my whole life because I love it. Uh, and I've made good money at it. That being said, I never hear anybody, and when these so-called experts come on, most times they have no clue what they're talking about. And I know it, but nobody else does. I listen to you, and I'm thinking, yeah, he gets it, man. He understands Kalia. He's read this stuff. So... I think people need to understand because people like, you know, yeah, Alex is twisted and all that. And I mentioned that in the previous interview, uh, you know, that's a bunch of nonsense. And I think most people know that, but, uh, you know, I'm in the business. So I guess that's supposed to mean that what I have to say has some greater bearing. Well, maybe it does, but what I'm saying is simply based on my experience. And my experience shows that Alex Jones is telling the truth. Well, thank so you. I, I mean, but, but I was that. only taught this by engineers like yourself, but but people couldn't believe it. Tell, tell folks uh, what you've worked in, what you've seen, what you can tell us that doesn't violate any non-disclosure about these okay. snooping hubs. Okay, so the the snooping hubs uh, per se, and okay, I don't. I'm gonna I'm gonna take that snooping hubs. I'm gonna put that over here. Okay, what what I've done is. I've worked for the energy companies, which is all the oil companies, gas pipelines, things of this nature. Um, I've worked for the FAA, other government agencies uh, that shall remain nameless, um, and all these things. So that's where it comes into critical infrastructure. The thing that I've worked on are the telecommunications networks that support the telephone system, the cellular system, the gas pipeline system, the grid. Uh, everything, all of these things function, especially today, because of integrated networks. In order for these things to function, you have to not only monitor this data, but you have to collect this data at one single source where you can monitor and manipulate it. You know, in a, in a network operations center or a, a power control operations center and things of those in, in that nature. So I've worked for the utilities. Um, uh, being a telecom guy, say for a utility, and I used to work for a, a county utility, a government agency, and I had the keys to the kingdom, which as a telecom guy, we always have the keys to the kingdom. And in this case, it was such that if I had chosen to be a bad guy or a terrorist or whatever you wanted to say, I just flipped out one day and decided to use my knowledge for nefarious purposes coupled excuse me, coupled with my access, I could have shut down the power to the Capitol building in Sacramento, California. Like that.
me, myself, and I. Could have done a lot of other things too. I could have done some seriously nefarious things and actually monitored that, set it up so that I could control it from my house. I had control anyway, because all I had to do was uh, RAS in, which means there's what's known as a RAS token and it generates a number. Uh, this was actually also hacked too at one point. And this allows you to access the private grid network at the utility I worked for via the internet. You know, it's HTTPS or HTTPS type of thing. So, see, I could go on and on about what I've done, Alex. So I don't know, does that give you enough of an idea or do you want me to broaden it out into the to the cellular and the telephone before listen, I Listen, you're the expert, Toledo? go where you want, but, but a day after you started talking to us, Snowden comes out and that's what he said. He said, look, any rogue analyst could dial into anything you want. And, and I've talked to FBI agents and others who told me five years before it came out, we can turn cars off with OnStar. Because mm -hmm. you can turn it on, it can turn it off. We can lock you in, we can lock you out, we can listen to you, and then it all came out. I mean, my point is, is they've built all these back doors, all these other functions, and what you're saying is, the way this stuff's built, it's got to surveil everything to work, but the problem right. is then they use that to then surveil us. Right. Let me jump forward to that. Okay. So now that we've kind of, you know, covered the aspect of the things that, that I've been focused on. So then they did this thing and this is going to jump right into the telecommunications and the PSTN, which is the public switch telephone network. And then you've also, which provides service to POTS lines, which is plain old telephone service, which is a singular line to your house. And then it goes into a switch, which at a central office, and then that goes out to a bigger pipeline, which then goes out to another switch to a bigger pipeline, and then it all integrates, and you know, I don't want to go into all the aspects of that. So this is our network. Well, this legislation came out called CLIA, and it was part of the telecommunity, well, it was associated with the TCA of 96. And there's some differences. In my mind, it was all part of the same thing. So anyway, what this allowed was a point of presence, so a physical layer access, and this is what's critical, it's a physical layer access, which means there is a point of, a physical point of presence in every central office everywhere in the United States, and I'm quite sure probably everywhere in the Western world. So let me just stop you there, I want you to elaborate. In the old days, they had to go place a wiretap on that line. Now it's hardwired into a wall where it's already tapped, it's just ready for them to access it. Right. If you go back and look at the laws for uh, taps and tap and trace, um, <clears throat> it comes down like this. You have what's known as a pin trace, and that's kind of like the metadata thing, okay? But a pin trace would just show you, I mean, way back when, when we had uh, key switches, that would show you what numbers were being accessed. So what it would do, it would, it would record the digits, and, they, and the, the search warrant would specifically say that. Then there's what's known as a tap and trace. And that's where you can actually get into uh, gleaning the data. That's why I would recommend to everybody in this day and age, talk over your cell phone. If they decide to use it against you, at least you have case law after case law history that you can fight with. Uh, email doesn't provide that. Plus, email has data persistence that at this point is going to last forever. So I digress there. I, I'm sorry, Alex. You got to redirect me. I, I, I get to no, talk no. You're kick. I mean, I mean, this is important because we're explaining how some of this basic stuff works. Specifically, though, looking at Snowden and the things he said, uh, knowing what you know is from your perspective, is it accurate? Absolutely accurate. And and I'll tell you, Alex, when that came out, um, I was pretty much floored because I had just talk to, to Rob, and I was basically saying those things. I believe I said something about it being easy as a fellow sitting there at the keyboard, and okay, what do I want to play with today? Let's see, James Knox, and well, let's see what he's into today. Uh, oh my God, he's, he, he wants to be, he wants to talk to Alex Jones, you know, and then they go on and they dig a little deeper and they dig a little deeper. And, you know, that brings forth a real big point where, you know, this isn't, and I, I think people get confused because, you know, when we say they're surveilling you, oh, that's an absolute fact. And are they surveilling all of us? Yes, absolutely. But that doesn't mean that there's a fellow sitting there in front of a monitor um, watching you day to day. It only becomes important when for, 
whatever reason, uh, you know, and it could be just sheer boredom that they run across you, like this guy Snowden. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to. You exactly, know, it like goes way. into a database. It goes into a container, almost like food in your refrigerator. And if they want to yes. go in there and look into it, but my big issue is how easy it is for them with this system to put data into your computer. I mean, how easy um, is it to set people up? That depends on the person. And uh, I don't, I know how I'd like to say this, but it's probably not very kind. And I'm not a very good politically correct person. Um, most people are truly naive. Uh, I don't, I have over 20 email addresses that are active. They're all monitored. Now, I don't email near that much. I do it like that so that I can shed an email address. If, uh, if I start getting any type of negative email on a specific address, I shed that address. I, as a matter of course, shed an address uh, probably every six months. Um, just out of function of habit, and I could go into the whole reasons why. And this, again, brings forth what I'm trying to get at, as I have a bunch of things that I do in order to protect myself. Right now, because I'm online with you, I'm looking, I have resource monitor pulled up, and I'm looking at network to look at what's communicating over the pipeline at my computer. So it's very, to answer your question just directly, it's, it's simple. It's as simple as monitoring you uh, if they want to take that access and hit you from the internet. Because when I'm talking about the central access point or central office point of presence access, that is different from the prism access. Now they function the same, they're not legally the same, and in reality, the uh, internet pop or tap, if you like, because that's exactly what it is. It's just sitting there, nobody knows it, and it's just, it's making a copy of every zero and one that passes by its, its lens, as it were. So everything's there, and it's being sucked up and just being stuffed in a box, and then later compartmentalized to be accessed uh, by Snowden or anybody else. Just that simple. Now, the problem for me, all this stuff becomes illegal. And I, I used to talk about the legality issues, but it seems to me the Constitution has been just thrown out the window because everything, all these things they're doing are illegal. When this stuff was set up, it was never intended for this to happen. And there are protections that set it up. The way they've gotten around this is because they're pulling this national security Bravo Sierra and saying, oh, the boogeyman, the boogeyman, we need this, we need this. They're not catching anybody but innocent Americans that are being harassed by their government. Again, without violating any of your non-disclosures or any of those areas, we were talking off air uh, earlier today before you agreed to come back on. You were saying in some cases when you were setting stuff up, there wasn't even one of those done because this is all done just cut and dry across the system. What specifically can you tell people about the type of systems that are out there? I mean, here's an example. I was told by a Time Warner engineer, one of the chief engineers at the time, he since died, so I can talk about it. Uh, he, was, he was an older guy. Uh, he said, don't even mention, you know, that I'm at Time Warner. I just said Time Warner is doing this. He gave me plans, documents, how the Scientific Atlantic Cable Box had a microphone years before this was used in interaction. And he said, that thing's live. All I know is I wired into these, these fiber optic cables that have been put in that are U.S. government, and that I've got to have people there making sure that's going through. And basically, if that ever shuts down, we have to shut your cable off until that's back up under these agreements. And I said, well, where do I prove this? He said, well, here's some documents, but look at the Telecommunications Act from 96. It's like two years after that. It's all right there. That's the only reason I can tell you this. And then I told people that, and it sounded crazy. So then we saw, you know, a decade later, Janet Jackson's breast pops out, and TiVo says, oh, we had 2.2 million rewinds, replays. People went, how did you know that? You know, the point is, much of what we talk about is, it's just hiding in plain view, so then how do they try to arrest Snowden, Edward Snowden, for saying things when Petraeus said last year, hey, we listen to you over your dishwasher now. I, I mean, I, I'm trying to figure that out is what I'm saying, because what you said today before we talked was, hey, man, this stuff's all out in the open. I'm not worried. I'll talk to you. But then how do they yeah. try to arrest him? 
Well, there's the difference, and that's why I made the point of that I have never been read on to anything that I'm speaking about. So all I'm speaking about is either uh, proprietary material from whatever manufacturers or you know proprietary engineering documents, just in the course of my business is what I'm talking about. Um, I'm not violating any agreements with anybody. And I just happen to know through my own research that all this stuff is in the legislation and it's been codified and it's all there. I used to take, you know, okay, I, I went into the service when I was 19, <clears throat> young, dumb, and full of whatever. Uh, and I just rock and rolled, man. I loved it. I loved basic training. I got busted for cracking a guy during bayonet training because I... I, I got a little too excited and I knocked him out. But uh, so I, I just I dove in. Um, I think I told Rob they had asked me to to go to West Point and uh, and all this stuff. So I ended up being a, a comsec assistant comsec custodian. And I used to do some things in this and that. So twenty so years. So that's old, how you got fast tracked into telecommunications because you were an army guy made man. Exactly. So I, I basically got woken up the day that I was allowed to access or see SCI, which is Secure Compartmentalized Information, and I hope that that's not classified. Um, so anyway, moving forward, that's how I just, I, you know, it was immersion therapy into this business for me. And then I came out of this and I got into the critical infrastructure business and I see all this stuff. So back to the question of Snowden. So here he comes in. Now I was talking about all this stuff back in, back then, being called crazy like you, yet I'm doing it. I knew about the cable boxes. I think that was like an 8,800 box or something you were speaking of. Yeah, yeah, that was 8,000. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Um, no, it said 8,800 Scientific Atlantic. Yeah, you got good, yeah. <laughs> See, that's what that's what says I'm pulling this stuff out of my memory. I'm not I'm not prepping for no, this. No, but you're you know doing I mean? it and people are gonna watch this and deny it. They are in such denial. I mean it's Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And they to this day, I I've had and I even I watched the uh, YouTube channel from which you guys posted and uh, just overwhelming positive, a couple of trolls, and then some people were coming back with that going, ah, this guy's full of it. And I'm thinking, are you kidding me? You can easily go and, you know, look up Kalia. You know, the things I talked about, you can easily prove that. Listen to Alex, what he has been talking about forever. This is all facts. So I don't know, Alex. I honestly have a real hard time because I love to share with people. And that's what I came on because, you know, I, I'm not here for any agenda other than to try to get people to understand that they're missing the bus. Yeah, but look at the yeah. comments. They're like 97% positive. I wouldn't let people. I mean, look, I had Mike Judge on, you know, the creator of Beavis and Butthead, King of the Hill, all of it, got a new HBO show. And people made jokes saying, that's not really Mike Judge, or I can do a better Beavis and Butthead. And they just do that to try to manipulate us and get us off subject. But it's important to respond to it sometimes to show the other viewers of this how they're being manipulated because it's not for you or me that they're doing this they're there to take somebody new who didn't work in telecommunications or who doesn't know what i know and just make them think it's bull they're there to just say this is not an assault don't run where your friends you know like mars attacks when the aliens are shooting us with ray guns so expanding on this when you see you know five six years ago bush saying we don't listen to anything without warrants well, you know the Telecommunications Act says it's all being, you know, recorded. It's all being run through grids. That doesn't mean they're looking at it all, but that's a lie. Now it's, okay, we're listening to you without warrants, but Obama, this cryptic statement of, if you don't trust us, things are going to get bad. What does that mean? To me, it means that... Uh constitutional rule in this country has been subverted uh, fully because if we go back and we jump back and I spoke to this Rob or with Rob and carnivore we didn't really get into it but I threw it out there and I threw it out there for a purpose and that purpose is that goes right to this argument because when carnivore was being discussed on the Senate floor that's what they were discussing was Hey, look, carnivore, hey, guys, it takes it all, but trust us, it's okay. There was huge clamor within America. No way, we don't want this, no way. All of a sudden, because this, 
individual, and this is where I have to be careful because I'm very upset about this in particular, um, is all of a sudden saying that what has been held to people's hearts in this country and what I swore to def die doing if it is necessary comes out and says, hey, it's okay. Yeah, the elephant's in the living room, but it's an Obama elephant, just like an Obama phone. Don't you feel good and safe <laughs> and warm and fuzzy? And that's the way I see it. And some of the comments of the people that agree with the fact that we need this stuff is exactly on that uh, wavelength where Oh, but we got to find the terrorists. We got to hunt the terrorists. And they just don't understand that it's it's like a 12-year-old kid sitting there and he knows that in the room next door is oh, who's the hottest babe of the day? There's a lot of them. Okay, let's go with that. Um and obviously I don't uh, my wife. <laughs> the hottest woman you can imagine. Right. Is in, in there. the next room. And so what's this 12-year-old kid going to do? If you tell him, no, 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 I'm going to cut your legs off if you go peek. But you and I both know you're going to peek. And this is what's happening. And because they've been able to find this loophole and say, hey, this is legal, and twist it to say it's legal, then they're not feeling bad. So it's all a lie. It's all a smokescreen. It's all gaslighting. And it's all bad, and it's and it's just it is. America needs to understand that we have a tyrant, the man who would be king, that is sitting there, and uh, you know, out of the left side of his mouth, he's saying he understands the Constitution. What people don't get is the way this man understands the Constitution is he figured out how to destroy it. Well, that's right. There's a new tape out of him saying. <laughs> In 2001, the Constitution is negative rights, and, 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 and it's getting in the way of me giving you this whole heaven. And again, I get these presidents are puppets, but i got to say, under Obama, they have light sped. Everything they're doing is just accelerating right now in everybody's face. And then to see them use spying on the Tea Party. Uh, we had Congressman Stockman on. He was talking about that. Spying on... The rest of the Congress spying on the cloakroom, and then it, no one gets in trouble. We're at this crossroads. If they don't get in trouble for this, then the dam breaks. The sky's the limit. Yes, and that's what I see is that nobody's putting up resistance. They're not doing their jobs. They're not living up to their oaths. You know, um, if I could be, if I could be Drill Sergeant Knox again and uh, go out there and and, and shoot him backside. Boy, I would love every minute of it. Well, listen, I just appreciate you, as somebody that works in telecommunications, talking to people about what's out there and what's going on. Uh, make, make, uh, imagine this interview being over and points that you wish you would have made. Make those, and then I've got a question about how they're privatizing it. Google, Facebook, oh, yeah. and more than a dozen big sites getting paid by the government to actually collate and give them the data and then building new systems to get you to give them your data. It's like Facebook, who calls their users dumb effers, will tell people, don't criticize Obama going after your guns, or we'll ban your account. We've gotten the messages here. And then they'll say, is this your high school friend to authenticate at your site? I'm like, I forgot about that high school friend. All they're doing is using me to database that that is indeed, they're actually humetting the public now to do intelligence work on other people. This is sick. This is sick. Yes, 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 A absolutely. Uh, and I can certainly speak to that. But to the first one, um, th this subject is so vast. I have so much to say. Well, say it. You got the floor. Go ahead. No, I know. I just what I'm getting at is that I will. I'll always come up with more things that I want to say. But you know, I would like to address uh, this, and it's some of um, from the first interview, because I did, I have answered every email that I got, and, I, and this is all new to me. I, I've never done anything like this before. I have no online presence just because that's the way I operate. Um, and I've met some really cool people, and like you said, everything has been positive. 
uh, been on the phone with a, with a few people. Uh, I talked to a fellow last night, uh, name of Bart, uh, as Bulldog Investigations in San Diego, and I, I he works out of there. Uh, you know, if anybody needs that in that area, this fella is really cool. Uh, we have spent, I think, in the last three days about 10 hours on the phone, um, if that says anything. Uh, I also met another individual who's a, he's a custom knife maker in the uh, name of Don, and it's Stebbins Knives. Beautiful, I mean, artwork, beautiful Damascus stuff, and that's something I'm, I'm into and, and long have been. So it was really cool that be, these people reached out to me, and it felt really good because, you know, then I all of a sudden knew that what I have to say does matter to people, and people do listen, and it gives me hope because I think we all got to have hope. And I know people bust up on you, Alex, for saying you're a fear monger, and maybe I just don't get that because I think you're nothing but positive because in the end, you're always pushing the positive message of we can prevail. And, and you know... Exactly. I want to know the intelligence of what the enemy's doing so we can beat them. People think when I tell them all this bad stuff, I'm trying to scare them, and I guess they're just cowards. Because for me, I mean, I want to know what the enemy's doing, the whole truth, like Patrick Henry said, and make preparation for it. Well, the only way... I'm a big fan of uh, Sun Tzu, the, the Art of War, written in 6 BC, and um, I don't remember how he says it, but, you know, you don't go to war until you know you're going to win. Well, the only way you're going to know you're going to win is to know what the other guy's capabilities are. And that's what I'm trying to tell people. I'm trying to give people an idea of what the capabilities they have. I don't need to sit here and tell everybody that they're being spied on and, and over and over again. But, you know, and, and, and blame people, that's, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get people to understand the big picture that everything Alex Jones has said and is talking about the spy system, pay attention. Go out and read it. Well, here's my point that I want to get your take on, because I think it's expanding on what you were just talking about, James. As individuals, whether you're in the military, a corporate person, a school teacher, whoever you are, when I was over in England and the majority of the cops were on our side and come over and say, we know what's going on with tears in their eyes, I would say, why are you concerned? They go, my family, the future. Humans get a threat at an instinctive level. And they understand this technology and who controls it is overwhelming the individual. And people get this is bad. They don't like the fact that we're getting beat here by this. And it, and, and it could be neutral technology if bad people weren't running it. It's, the, you know, it's not the technology that's bad, it's that bad people have been able to control the architecture of it. And I think humanity's finally getting that, hey, it's not good guys running this, and you know, we should never have trusted them. So, so my point is the individual, I think, is waking up to the fact, and even people that work for the system realize in their gut that they're walking the plank here, that, that this is not gonna be good for anybody, in human development. What's your take on that? I think that's, I, you, know, you hit the nail on the head. And what they've created is, you know, this thing called a panopticon. Um, and what people don't understand is that Google, Facebook, all these things, I mean, the Google headquarters is right next door to the NSA box in Mountain View. It's just a fact. Um, Google Blimp. I, th I find that quite funny because the reason they're doing that is because Moffett Field, which is right next door, was a dirigible base during World War II. My grandfather redid the, the concrete floors there. I, at five years old, I was running around Moffett Field. Um, actually, I got introduced to the NSA when I was a kid. Uh, maybe that had something to do with where I ended up. But uh, well, as soon as I heard a Google blimp, I'm thinking, okay, they're reaching out another thing, but that's just another connection. Um, you know, when Gerald Salente, who I, I love Gerald, and I got to do something for him. Hey, we've got that button. We've got that button here in the office. You know, it's funny. Alexander Haig wanted to launch blimps because they're cheaper with all the intelligence arrays. And then uh, the public's gotten upset by them, so they're going to launch the NSA surveillance blimps with Google on them. So yes. then it's all cute and funny, and, oh, they've got yes. that new Vince Vaughn movie about Google coming out. Oh, it's so sweet. Oh. Right. Well, that's what I was trying to get at was, you know, how, how Gerald always talks about corporatism 
government fascism by definition and i think he really nails it with that and that's what we see and i think that that's what people need to realize and i don't think they understand that when that the incept of facebook the incept of google these things darpa was in there uh and others that you know i have my assumptions but i can't prove it so i probably shouldn't say it um, but we know you know alphabet soup now james here's another question were you mid-level, high-level? How would you describe your position where you were able to basically dial into telecommunications of millions of people, shut down the Capitol, uh, you know, do all sorts of stuff, and then tying it into Edward Snowden when he says analysts could do that? Uh, I, mean, I mean, just guesstimating, how many people then do you think are able to tie into these networks and do this? Okay, well, that I mean, just that specific part at this point... Um... I'm really afraid because I think it's far more than I realize because it could be, you know, it could be as, as few as 10 or as many as tens of thousands. Uh, it's, it's just that simple. Uh, and I don't Were know. Were you mid-level or high-level? Well, me, and that's what I was going to say. See, there's probably, probably, I don't know, last time I looked, there's probably 50,000 of me in the U.S. today. Uh, I'm a dying breed. I am a transport engineer. So that means, and, and microwave was what, and fiber optics, those are my two big loves. So I'm a high-level guy because I have the keys to the kingdom, but I've never had access like Snowden did. Um, I mean, if I wanted to make access for myself like that, I very easily could have done so, but I wouldn't do that, you know? So the access that I've had comes from just the nature of what I do because I maintain all those systems. I I, I have to, you know, feed them and clean them and do the programming and, and, and just keep everything going, you know, and then I build them. Um, You're physically so, in the guts. Yeah, I'm the guy that, you know, if, if the network that I physically engineer and build and maintain goes away, none of this works. Wow. And you're saying there's 50,000 of you. Yeah. And, and what they've done, see, I went, I went in the military. I was a 26 victor. My school was a year long. The first two months were straight up hardcore basic electronic theory. And then we went into uh, equipment and systems after that. Um, I've, yeah, I've worked on everything from the very first Collins radios all the way up to uh, the last big project I did was a big OC48 metro network with 44 uh, nodes, and I, I set the whole thing up. Every, every test and acceptance document had to and does have my signature on it. So that's where I lived in the world. I don't really look at it as mid-level or high-level because I'm over here in kind of this, you know, uh, wonderland that nobody really knows about and nobody understands. D does that make sense? No, no, I totally get it. You've got people with the codes at the top is what I meant who are able to get into networks but you yes. are like you're like hey I'm an elf actually in the machinery I could do whatever I want exactly I, I am a ghost in the machine no I totally get that I totally get that and you know that's a good analogy all of us in resistance to this tyranny are ghosts in the machine we just don't know the power we have you know, there was somebody you had on the other day, and I just, I, I caught it to my ear, you know, as I was walking down the hall, and he said something about uh, overwhelming them with keyword usage on the phone or something. Yeah. That is, uh, that's an act of futility. Because when just something just, floods, they just, they just turn that off, right? Yep, exactly. It, it's, it's as, to them, it's as easy as brushing a fly away from their face. Well, I'm no expert, but I knew that myself. Just as we get attacked with something, we just turn, on, turn that off. Uh, what mm -hmm. about uh, what I found is having complex discussions about government corruption. They really use the NSA to try to stop whistleblowers. That's what I found really shuts them up, really causes them a problem. Mm -hmm. I, I would absolutely agree. And I tell you what, you know, speaking of that and speaking to Snowden and what they're trying to do to him, that is just, uh, you know, people should be screaming. They need to understand that Snowden was living up to his oath. He, because he, he has sworn just like everybody that is, that is, you know, gone to work. You know, if they're, if they're a government employee 
with that kind of access, they've taken the oath. They're sworn to the Constitution. And like for me, I always go back to, you know, I, it, it's a big deal to me. And then also my general orders. I shall not obey a general order and I shall report that. Well, I think he felt like he couldn't, he had no way to report it. So he had to give it out that way. Near as I can tell, I don't see any other uh, agenda on this guy's plate. Well, and I talked to Wayne Madsen, thing. who worked in the NSA today. And he's talked to a whole bunch of NSA people off record. And, I mean, he's the real deal. He's given me so many big breaking stories. I, I like him. He's, he, he comes off to me like the man knows, yeah, he's been there, done that, would be my take as well. And he just said basically what Snowden said. He said there are thousands of contractors who can get into anybody's bank account, anybody, and they're using it to, like, harass women. They're using it to, like, screw with people. He said they're selling it to corporations, and the government only goes after people that would sell it to a foreign government. But they like the, the corporations run the government now, so they're basically have taken the government over. We've been infiltrated. I mean, most of the contractors are private now, and they're doing the analyst work. I mean, listen, I've gotten the phone calls. My wife's gotten them. I've talked about it, where they say, you know, I'm going to cut your effing head off. And by the way, mm -hmm. you know, I hope your dad dies while he's in the hospital. Yeah, that's right. I'm listening to your GD phone. And I mean, uh, so that might be some hacker or somebody doing that. But, you know, my gut level is it, you know, that it isn't. What do you think of things like that going on? What does that sound like? Dress for success. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Exactly. No, no, that's uh, what I've got. I, I, doesn't I, I, know that I, I did that just because, to be honest with you, that was my first thought when I said that. I wasn't trying to be flippant by saying that. I was actually very serious by doing that. And what I mean by drawing this weapon, here I am sitting at home, and just out of habit of the way I live, I, I, I'm dressed. Um, those guys, I think the key is the fact that you understand what they're doing, and you know that that threat exists. So you set up your walls and boundaries and you keep fighting the good fight. And, you know, I don't know about you, Alex. I look at it this way. I always, you know, no bloodshed is the best, but if it comes down to brass tacks, I'm not rolling over. And if these guys come rolling in my house one night at four o'clock in the morning, it's a good chance I'm going to be up. But I know this, my wife's going to be coming down the stairs with her 870 tactical and something bad's going to happen. But I think every American needs to stop and think about that and realize that, no, it's not you. It's not the guy next door. It's not down the street, but it's happening to somebody. And well, no, no, exactly. Know. And plus, guys that call up to threaten you, it's a psychological operation. You're not going to see, you know, usually the bullet that really comes for you or whatever. My whole issue is that the, someone's jacked into the network and calls me whenever something bad is happening psychologically uh -huh. to mess with me. My point is I have experienced people listening to my phones. I've experienced where nothing comes up on caller ID and they threaten you. And then you go okay, out. Okay, I... Yeah. Well, I was going to say, okay, I, I kind of misunderstood that. No, I no, 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 but I get what it. you're saying. No, that's a great response about the okay, gun okay, defending cool. yourself. My whole point is is that I have experienced someone listening to my phone repeatedly because they tell you, they say, hey, right. you know, they use that knowledge that, hey, I'm listening to your damn phone. But it comes up on the caller ID as not private number or anything like that, just blank, correct? Blank, yeah. Okay, the reason that happens, and this is a big deal, actually, Alex, SS7 exists. And if you go into a central office, only certain people have access. It's all locked up. The SS7, it's signaling, signaling system 7. There's actually a new No, wait, this is new. I didn't, hold now. on, I didn't know this. I, didn't, I just know when we've gotten okay. these calls, nothing comes up. Yeah, so, okay, that's all, that all runs over the signaling system, okay? So that's like the, the traffic cop. Of the, of the public, stop talking with my hands. Um, that's like the traffic cops for the public switch telephone network. So what that tells you when it comes up, nothing like that, it, it says that whoever is in there has the ability to manipulate the signaling bandwidth that exists and strip out that data so that it doesn't get transported to you. That's why, see, to me, the fact that it's blank is hugely significant. You know, I can listen to a phone call and listen to the noises and tell you what's happening in that circuit. So I see things through a very different set of eyes because I've been a troubleshooter all my life. Because there's tones, so, right? Yes, sir. Yeah.
And and so as soon as you know, as soon as you said, oh, it's blank, that keyed to me. Oh, well, that tells you, and it also tells me that you're not fooling. And this does happen, and will probably likely happen more. Oh, and believe now, me, I wish it. I believe me, me, believe me, I wish it wasn't happening. <laughs> you know. Uh, I, I would like to, you know, I would like that you and I uh, talk offline about that stuff because maybe I can give you some ideas to uh, deal with that, you know? No, the guys were with me at a steakhouse once right after Bilderberg when Obama had been there five years ago. And my wife's dad was in the hospital and her mom had been sick as well. And she, she calls up, oh, hi, honey, I'm about to fly out at Dallas. I'll see you in about four hours, blah, blah, blah. And she calls back crying. This has happened to me before, too. And they said, you know, blah, 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 and then threatened her and said, I hope your dad dies and all this stuff. And then I said, well, what's the caller ID? And she said, well, there's nothing. It's blank. You know, you, like a woman calls up and says weird stuff, and it's like, we're, it's not on the phone. Like in the last 15 years, it's probably happened 10 times, you know, like five, mm -hmm. five times to me, like five times to my wife. And it's just like you call the phone company back and they go, what's the number? What's it say? You know, does it say unavailable? And, and the phone company says, sorry, sir, no record. And you're just like, yeah. you know, there's just nothing you can do. They just, you know. Well, they, and the funny thing is you're being lied to because they know damn well what's going on. Oh, really? Uh, I didn't know that. Okay. Well, okay. I, I shouldn't be so about that. Um, anybody that is, you know, if you're just getting some ding dong in a call center, maybe not. But anybody with any knowledge of the of the switch or anybody with any technical knowledge within the phone company they're going to know what's going on sure that was in cbs they, news uh, the navy seal family after they were killing their sons they were getting all these weird calls and text and the phone company actually told them it's it's from dc and afghanistan mm -hmm. so i guess you're right they told them right and and so what happens is because they see they kalia if, if you got access to kalia it's like you got me sitting in the switch doing whatever you want to do. And you're, you could be anywhere, like Afghanistan, like you say. It's all a matter of knowing how to access that network these days. And that's what scares me the most. This, this intel was never supposed to be run by contractors. That's ludicrous. Absolutely ludicrous. Never supposed to happen. They're screwing up the way they security these guys. Nobody realizes a lot of the reason this stuff gets contracted is because they can fluff the security check procedures. And I know this for a fact. But can I? Can, do I have documents? No. But I know it for a fact. And I'm really a little afraid to to talk about that because I think I could get in trouble. But uh, do you know? You, 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 do you understand what I'm saying, Alex? No, no. I know for Congress people to go see classified stuff, they've got to go through a big procedure. And you're saying but they see, don't, yeah. The, the contractors, okay, that's true, because if you're a government employee, it's, it's all set up. But these contractors, they get these exceptions. And, be, and this started back in the Bush days, but, but because it's a contractor and because of the national security and because of eminent threat, and I don't see an eminent threat, but that's what they're playing and running with, they can kind of shortcut things. Like with me, um, I haven't had an active clearance since uh, the late 80s. I mean, I had a clearance, but it hasn't been active. Um, to this day, because my background has been investigated about every year of my life, and I, don't, I can't tell you how many times I've fingerprints for the FBI and, and all that crap. It's just nature of the beast. Um, so I could be cleared, you know, very rapidly to a high level of clearance, but there would, it would still be questionable for them to do it that way. Uh, when I was in the military, they can fast track you, but as a civilian, it, there's a whole different uh, DOD process to get cleared. And it's all run by DOD. And it used to be, uh, uh way, I, well, they've changed all that. So I better not, yeah, I'll, I'll say something wrong. I'm sure. No, I understand. A lot of this stuff's classified. But my whole issue is that they classify all this stuff to protect us. Who protects us from the 800,000 contractors? Who protects us from all the foreign governments with the Chinese building back doors and all the switches? Uh, b because they're told to for specs so they can be backdoored by the government. I mean, it is just a recipe. In closing, Petraeus has a girlfriend. And the FBI uses that to go after him because he didn't like what happened at Benghazi. And then he goes to Bilderberg to promote the Panopticon surveillance that destroyed him. And it's like all these guys think they're going to use the Ring of Mordor 
to, to, to you know, save everybody, but it cannot be used for good in the final equation. I think that's the issue. And so how does humanity even survive with the power of the gods? You know, um, you're good friends with Dave Mustaine, right? Yeah, good guy. Yeah, I, 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 I think so. I've never met the man, but uh, I've listened to Megadeth and, and I listen to Megadeth, but I don't listen to Metallica, and that's a whole story. But uh, I grew up, you know, I, I saw those fellows in 1982, so that's kind of what I grew up with. Oh, wow. And when you were talking about that, you know the song, uh, Just Like a Pied Piper? Um, Let the Rats Appetite, Loose? Appetite for Destruction. Yes. And that just popped into my head when you said that. Do, do you know the lyrics to that tune? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, with what you just said, I think that is very much the case. And I think it's Symphony for Destruction. That's it. Symphony for Destruction. That's it. That's it. And so I think that whole aspect of things almost answers that question in the sense that uh, we need to get behind what we know and stand. So what I mean is... Don't feed the system, because that's the problem, is nobody can get off the tit, because they got to have their email, they got to have their Google, they got to have their Facebook, they got to have their Twitter. Okay, fine. I could do all those things, but the way I do it, which is going to take more effort on their part, pretty much, it doesn't necessarily keep me safer per se, as far as an attack, but I'm going to know when that attack's happening. So I can instantly take steps to, to, to provide resistance. And I think that's what people need to start doing. Exactly. People say, I've got nothing to hide. They don't care you have nothing to hide. They're using these as conduits into your life to raid your ass. It's so that it's pre-crime, folks. It's so that they can predetermine through algorithms that you can't even begin to imagine. I mean, the predictive algorithms that are being devised today are freaking scary. You know, um, I just realized who you remind me of because I've seen old films of him and I consulted on a movie, uh, 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 Scanner Darkly. You remind me of Philip K. Dick. Really? Yeah. Well, listen. Uh, well, I, now I'm. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to say I I, uh, I have never seen him speak. I'm going to have to go uh, watch an interview. I guess. Well, you look a little like him, and you talk about some of the same issues. You know, he's the guy. Oh, really? that, he's the guy that wrote the Blade, Matrix, right? A Blade Runner, a ton of it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of stuff. He's oh. like, he's like, he's like the quintessential, uh, quintessential guy. Well, I love uh, Blade Runner. I mean, that movie was... Science fiction futurist. Yeah, yeah. the late Philip yeah, K. Dick. I, I, PKD. Uh, Check it out. Well, oh, listen. I definitely will. I, 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 uh, I'm into that. You're breaking up a little bit, Alex. I'm I understand. Sorry. Well, listen, in closing, anything else you want to add? I really appreciate you spending time with us. Oh, happy to do it. And, um, well, I would like to say this, and I probably ought to, to address all the things that I got in uh, email. A lot of people are asking me... Uh, what can we do to stop this? And again, I'd, I'd kind of like to talk with you, Alex, uh, offline um, about that because there seems to be a real clamor for it. And I think maybe uh, we could work together and do something like that because I'm certainly open to doing it. Well, that's if, another question. If, How do we gum up their system if keywords about terrorism don't work? We know they're not actually trying to stop terrorists. They're funding them most of the time. I mean, what does gum it up? Just having complex discussions about, yeah, I'm going to expose the newspaper tomorrow that uh, the feds are shipping cocaine into Austin, or, yeah, there's a, there's a press conference tomorrow about the NSA spy hub at Time Warner, from what exactly. I've... That totally freaks them out, because they're really exactly. using NSA to cover up the corruption. Exactly. You start talking about that, and you get these analysts to key in on what you're saying, so that you're not flooding them with keywords. They're all of a sudden getting intel that they have to work on. You get these people to start wasting their resources. If they're out there chasing ghosts... They don't have time to chase you. Oh, like this. Oh, uh, that. Oh, that's going to be released tomorrow. That footage of a senator, uh, that senator raping a child. Yeah, it's mm. going to be released on CBS News. It's total crap. But they've got a job to run that down to shut down to protect that senator. And by exactly. talking about and then, it, and like, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. At the end of that, you know, you throw in, oh, yeah, you know, I read this article on, on VX and GB and all that. And I was thinking about taking a vacation down to Johnson Atoll. 
boom. And then you say the word infrastructure or critical infrastructure, By telecommunications. The, absolutely. Boom. Oh, yeah, we're going to get that package into the main telecom center at Salt Lake tomorrow. Yep. There you go. The guys have got their passes. Yeah. You got it, Alex. That That is a very good... You know, if you can if you can get the masses, it, that becomes almost a a human denial of service attack. But instead, they they try to condition us that we just say the word bomb all day, and then all they do is tune that out by itself. It's so ridiculous. It's just unbelievable. right. And then, well, with the predictive thing, they take all that in, and everybody thinks it doesn't mean anything. But what they don't understand, they take all that in. It goes into the, you know, and that gets spit out to the media office, and to all the the uh, media folks that feed then feed this garbage to the uh, the mainstream folks, and then they're just parrot spitting it out. So it becomes not only disinformation; it's active psychological operations against the entire population to make people we'll believe oh look at those horrible hackers attacking the nsa trying to protect yeah. the terrorists saying the word terrorist when if you really want to shut them down talk about yeah no the state police can't be stopped they're going to stop that shipment of uh, opium being flown into miami tomorrow at 2 p.m they're on to the cia Right. Now that's going to start an entire investigation because the NSA is there to stop the police stopping the drugs being shipped in. And they don't know you're lying. They don't know you're making it up. They don't have a clue. Because the computer is reading it and flagging it. Exactly. So this is where the system breaks down. Their automation works against us. But if you're actively trying to disrupt it, and I want to tell everybody that what I'm saying now I'm not telling you to go fight these people, mind you. I'm just kind of rolling with Alex on a Philip K. Dick kind of uh, mental exercise. Yeah, well, what here, we're saying so. is it is propaganda to say you jam the NSA saying bomb all day. That is, right. I agree. Because I've talked to engineers a decade ago, I saw articles saying that. Engineers said that's pure crap. All we do is program in that it's that word, plus real terrorists don't sit there and say, bring the bomb tomorrow. I mean, no, it, the real terrorists are going to have their code words set up and they're going to know how to talk to each other so that because they know the keywords, they look for everything of that. And if their buddies get busted, they figure out why. I mean, these people are they're they're going out to kill people. There's no boogeyman. But are there uh, crazies? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but I mean, more people die falling. I, mean, I think it's, it's like 3,000 people a year die falling in the bathtub. 250 we'll from deer, three, 4,000 from falling in the bathtub, honeybees 200, wasps 200, terrorism 45. Man, I tell you, really impressed having you on. James, well, I, thank you, sir. James, I appreciate your time. And, uh, and, I, and absolutely, we should have you back on about solutions to protect yourself from corrupt hackers, government, Zuckerberg calling his users dumb efforts. How do we not let these guys look into our house like it's a glass house while they have all this privacy? That's another question. How do we legally and lawfully get into their privacy? Because I think they deserve some of their own medicine. Yeah. Um... I'd have to talk about that one offline, Alex. <laughs> uh, I, I, I hate to bail on that, but I, I really have to. Oh, no, to. no, I'm not even calling for that. Absolutely. I'm not even. My whole point is there's so many different perspectives to look at because think about how they're assaulting our privacy, but then they always want their privacy. Their privacy oh. is, oh, national security, uh, you know. You know, and the way I understand the Constitution, and I was a public servant all my life, um, though I didn't necessarily work for the government all my life. You know, you work in critical infrastructure, you're doing that for the public good. You know, it's just the nature of the beast. Um, so I understand that very well. I see the Constitution as these people need to understand that when, they're, when they put that uniform on, whatever uniform, even if it's a suit, uh, and they go to work, they are in the public eye. They have no expectation of privacy what are you expectation of what they do but if you want to videotape i don't see i you know they're they're hiding behind a law or a right that does not exist in closing this is the last closing question i want to ask you this i flew back <laughs> in i flew back in to the united states and went through four different checkpoints to get in and they would ask me do you have drugs i'm like no i'm not the government shipping it in and they'd laugh but one lady got in my face and she said you shouldn't have a passport it's expiring in a year and a half. And I just laughed at her. 
And it's so many government people now don't act like thugs, but more of them do than used to. And they're, they're admittedly trying to hire people who aren't really tough. They're trying to act tough, messing with families. Have you ever run into that, this new government breed of, like, like wimps acting tough, and it's, like, bizarre, and it's really obscene, too, because anybody knows a real tough guy is not going to be trying to act tough and, and piss on innocent people. You be very quiet, and you conduct yourself with military bearing, and you act appropriately. Um, yeah, I haven't flown in a great many years because of the TSA. I flew to Utica uh, to do a one-on-one -on -one course uh, with a, a GN net test uh, for about a week. No problem flying out of here. And since I was flying to New York, it was one of the rare times I didn't fly with a pistol. Um, <clears throat> But it was very strange. Uh, when I got there, I was just tripping around, and, and I went to a gun store. Well, I went to the Outback Steakhouse to eat, and I had, a, I think, a Foster's and a tequila, anyway, and some coconut shrimp or whatever. And I'm sitting there chatting with everybody. And I go over to this gun store, and their laws are really weird. You can't even walk up to the counter if you don't have their little... I don't know, gun card. But the strangest thing, uh, some dude, and the guy got mad at me because I didn't understand the laws, you know, and he barked at me and told me to back up and this and that. And I started to query him about what was going on. And some dude walks up to me and he goes, that really sucks, huh, Jim? I went, oh, uh oh. And I walked out and... I don't know who they were. I'm thinking FBI. I don't know why. They, you know, they might have just been checking up on me. I don't know why in Utica. But to answer your question, as I was leaving Utica, I flew out of Syracuse, and I go in there, and there's this little short redheaded fellow and acting very effeminate and, you know, kind of faggy. Excuse me. No, uh, I, I don't mean anything by that. Uh, and... The supervisor, which was this little short-haired woman that obviously had an attitude, and she's all, you want to fly today? Well, this guy palmed my, uh, my genitals and was very kind about it. Uh, it was all I could do not to kill him. Uh, I restrained myself, had some very negative words to them, got on a plane, didn't speak to a soul. I haven't set an, a foot in an airport since and that was in 2005 exactly and that's what we're talking about here is the human domination they want to break our will and train us that we're all prisoners and instead of giving into it we've got to speak out and that's what you've done here today and it's time for us to understand sure we could all be suspected of something but we're innocent until proven guilty government though the founders said has got to be kept on a short leash and it is not considered innocent until proven guilty because we know government the history is, government is guilty until proven innocent and they have to prove themselves innocent hey alex can i can i plug those two fellas uh that contacted me before we go sure i mean if you want to absolutely well yeah just because i you know i i'm not, like i say i don't have an agenda but uh i mean you know if I, they they're just good fellas and do good work and it's uh you like talking Steb to them sure stebbins knives uh out of new hampshire and they're just beautiful damascus uh artwork uh check them out I don't have the web address, but no, I'm sure it's easy one. to No, I want one. They ought to become sponsors. And the other guy was Bulldog uh, Investigations. And Bulldog Investigations, yeah. And he's out of San Diego. I don't have numbers or anything. But I just, you know, they reached out to me, and, I, and I've talked to them. And I guess I want to try to do that to, to try to give something back and to try to say, hey, you know, I'm doing this because this is what I feel and you know i want to give back i want to be a real person i want people to understand that i'm not i'm not here for any agenda i want to answer your guys's questions because there seems to be a need for this information sure i just and, and want to help uh, haven't you also started uh, um, uh under your pen name a youtube channel well, I set one up, and everything's been so busy. I, I haven't uh, been able to to do anything yet. And uh, sure, but plug Robin it so people know about it in the future. You can post this video too there if you want. What, what, what's the site? Yeah, and you and if you want, you know, anybody can contact me via darkcomo at gmail dot com. D a r k c o m o at gmail. Uh, 
Um, all right, we I don't got it use up on. Gmail particularly. I don't care who I use. So if anybody is freaking out about that, uh, don't worry about it. Hit me up. Uh, I talk real short. And if you really got something to say, I'll talk to you. But beyond sure, that, sure, sure. You know, All do right. My best. Well, listen, Jim. Good talking to you. And I'll say bye you to too, you here at the end of the show. Uh, thanks a lot for talking to folks. You're an interesting fellow. Thank you, Alex. I really enjoyed it. Really, really enjoyed it. You bet. It. You bet, buddy. Wow. Uh, so there you go. I mean, you don't want to really use the word whistleblower, but he's there from the inside going, hey, this stuff's going on. And it just shows the naivete of the public that for 16, 17 years I've been covering this, and now it's mainstream news and people are finally starting to wake up. But we don't have time anymore to be in denial about this. And the bad guys are using these systems against the Tea Party, against libertarians, against conservatives. And it's wrong, and they need to be brought to justice for it. So without further ado, I'm going to end this transmission. Great job of the crew. Thanks for Jakari Jackson doing the news portion of the transmission earlier tonight. This is the type of groundbreaking information that takes place here Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock Central, InfoWars Nightly News. And we jump through a lot of hoops to bring you this information. That's why we appreciate your support. If you are a subscriber, please share your username passcode. Make an original one that you can share. Give it to friends and family so that they can watch the nightly news. 11 people can watch it with the same username passcode. That's less than 55 cents a month, and that pays for the bandwidth and the cameras and the crew. Uh, also, if you want to support us at InfoWarsStore.com with the water filters and the books and the films, all of that, all of it, this year especially, goes back into the operation. I'm, I'm actually spending more money right now than I'm taking in going into reserves to do this expansion against the globalist because I don't want to lose this fight. People ask, what makes me tick? Freedom, not being a slave. So please support us at InfoWarsStore.com. Uh, While supplies last, get in bulk a copy of the new uh, June magazine exposing the global crime syndicate, the Bilderberg Group, at InfoWarsStore.com. Uh, and other than that, just thank you all for your prayers and support because the globalists aren't digging bunkers and buying billions of rounds of ammo and buying armored vehicles and trying to take on the Tea Party for no reason. They plan on imploding the country and trying to collectivize it. If we fight them and hold the door back, they'll try it later. It, uh, liberty is an ongoing fight. People say, Alex, where's the New World Order? Yeah, some of it's happening, but it's not as bad as you said because we're holding the door back. And, and, and it, people are bitching going, well, it hadn't gotten as bad as you said, because the New World Order is like 12 years behind. We're holding it back. Join us. Instead of just holding it back, let's push it back. Let's gain some ground here. We've got a chance to do it, but they may stage something at any time to come after us. How do you know who the good guys are? We're the ones being demonized. Bloomberg two days ago had an article saying, quote, Alex Jones doesn't build bombs, he builds bombers. When I'm saying never offensively start a fight, be ready to defensively protect yourself. They are scared of us, folks, because we know their MO, we do the real research. I turn on the nightly news, it's a, even if they're telling the truth, it's at a two-year-old two level because they're all so dumbed down. The public has been lazy. They don't know the infrastructure of things. I've studied it, law, telecommunications, all of it, to have a basic understanding. All you need is a basic understanding of general knowledge. We can defeat these people. And that's why the info war is so important. So I'm Alex Jones signing off for this edition of Extended Whistleblower Info Wars Nightly News. Great job to the viewers and great job to the crew. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at InfoWars.com show.